How do you create something out of nothing? How do you create a business out of your hobby or your passion? I'm here with Brian Rose in London, England. Brian What's up? Is the, What's up? Brian is the host of London Real. Tell us what London Real is, Brian. London Real is the video talk show that introduces you to the most fascinating people in the world. There you go. That was like a cool little like caption. That? Let's walk. <laughs> and um, we're here in London. We're Hampstead Heath, right? We're Hampstead Heath. Great view of the London skyline. Yeah. Now. Um, Brian here created London Real, which is a wonderful uh, program on YouTube. So check it out at London Real. And he did it just as a hobby. So tell us the story. It was like four years ago. You used to be a banker, but you wanted to be. You wanted to interview people. Like how did it? How did it come about? Yeah. So we've been shooting for four years. Probably have got 320 people I've interviewed. Sometimes as long as two and three hours. Uh, sometimes they're members of parliament or billionaires or you know great sportsmen. It could be really anyone. Fascinating. But it started off really as just just me communicating with the world, trying to uh, tell great stories of fascinating people. So it's funny, we, James and I were just talking and he was like, well, so did you start it to teach people how to do this or that? I didn't. I just started it to have great conversations. It was really organic. It was never a business. It was really just uh, something I felt a need I had to do, just express myself or get these messages out in the world. So. Yeah. I had a similar experience when I created my podcast in iTunes. It actually used to be called the uh, Alpha Male Club. It was nice. stuff for men. And I just really wanted to talk about being a better man and like health, relationships, fitness. So I just literally started reaching out to people. The first interview I did was a guy called Rob Wolf, who's the author oh, yeah. of The Paleo Solution. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I reached out to Tucker Max, uh, yeah. who's a friend of mine, who wrote some kind of like funny comic comic books um, about ten years ago, yeah, yeah. and uh, a few other people. And I just started interviewing them, like just on a Skype call, just when I was, and just throwing it up on this podcast, the audio, and it became really, really big, really quickly. And but it was just me having conversations with really interesting people. So for you, that was kind of similar, right? Like you just wanted to engage in fun, nice, interesting, deep conversations and that was what the business was born out of? Yeah, I mean, very much so. It was only really became a business about a year, year and a half ago. So it really just was an expression. I think a lot of it was me getting my own demons out, expressing my own feelings and finding a way of communicating with the world, to be right. very honest with you. And uh, I think what we got was like real, genuine, vulnerable conversations with people. And uh, as humans, we all want connection and you can pick that up and you can feel like a real conversation versus something that's not or scripted, it's on TV and it's edited. So like we always want something that was unedited, unscripted, has those uncomfortable pauses, but it has those great moments where someone says something that just blows your mind. So, so someone's watching this now and they have a hobby or a passion or an interest. Um, what, how, how do they start like using the, you know, the examples of what you and I have both done, I guess, with the podcast and with your, with London Real? You know, with uh, London Real, when I was on the Joe Rogan experience, I said, anyone listening around the world, you can start your own reel. And so some people started Toronto Real and Vancouver Real and Dublin Real and LA Real. And people contact me all the time and like, Brian, I'm thinking about doing the reel. And I'm like, don't think about it. Send me a pilot or don't waste my time. So that means you just got to do it, you know, and especially yeah. when it comes to this stuff, you know, you could have not recorded your first episode. Right. You could have been like, what are people going to say about me? Right. What are my friends going to say? You know, you just have to just F and do it as Dan Pena would say, yeah. you're a 50 billion dollar man. So you got to just execute on it because everybody has these dream ideas that never go off the ground. So that's right. what I would say. Just you got to jump in. Don't worry about what everyone's going to say. Um, don't worry about who's going to see your video. You know, I, I make videos for a living and I still have a hard time getting people to watch my videos. So don't worry. No one's going to watch your video. Just make, it. <laughs> just make it, you know? You know, I always say it's like Nike have got the best slogan in the world. Yeah. Just do it, right? And I always say that. It's like, just do it. I feel fear. I say, just do it. I see a pretty girl. If I'm single, I'm like, she, I, I think my mind goes, oh, she's got, a, she's got a boyfriend. She's not going to want to talk to me. I'm like, just do it. So you go up and say hello. You've got a, uh, something that you want to put out and you want to record yourself. Um, but you're scared what people are going to say. You're going to have like blog trolls or people online who are going to be haters. Who cares? Just do it. Because only when you do it do you get feedback. And only when you get feedback do you get results. And only when you get results can you progress and forward, um, progress your life, right? Yeah. So just do it. Here's the other thing. Um, have you seen the movie Empire Strikes Back? Uh, Empire Strikes Back? Yes, I have. Okay. Yes. So there's this really cool scene when um, Luke Skywalker's with Yoda. 
on yeah. uh, what was it, what was the was it what was the planet they were on where he went and did the training? Yeah, Remember yeah. Dagobah or something? something? Crazy. Well, he says what either do or do not. Yes. Is that yes. What Yoda says? So yeah. Yoda says to Luke Skywalker, "I want you to lift the the uh, the crashed um, p uh, plane out of the swamp with your mind." And Luke Sky Skywalker says, "All right, I'll give it a try." And Yoda says, "No, do or do not. There is no try." And that, and that is a huge thing for me as well. People say, oh, try. I'm like, I'm not going to try. I'm just going to do it. And I, when I interviewed um, Will Smith, uh, the great Hollywood actor, when I used to be a celebrity interviewer, um, he said that when he decides to do something, that's it. In his mind, it's already done. People have just got to wait to see it. Mm. So is there, is there that, a certain element of that when you're doing London Real or anything in your life where it's like, just do it. I'm just going to do it even though I feel the fear, even though I feel like this might not work out. You just do it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'm always thinking of this uh, famous mixed martial artist named Boss Rutan, and he used to fight uh, in Japan back in the day before the UFC was around. And he always said, uh, he's Dutch, and he says, if you don't shoot, you always miss. And so for me, any decision is better than no decision because you make a decision, you make a mistake, you get feedback, and then you adjust, 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 adjust. Or you sit around and a year later you haven't done anything. So yeah, it sounds simple, but you just gotta do it. You have to take some risk and um, you know try something, otherwise nothing's gonna happen. Having said that, when you do try things, sometimes you are gonna fall flat on your face. Can you give us an example of a time where you tried something and it was just a monumental F up? Uh, well, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, for example, you know, London Real for the first couple of years was just me in a studio talking to people, you know, and you could argue there wasn't a lot of traction, there wasn't really a business model, there was really nothing going on there. Uh, and so I had to think long and hard about why I was doing it. Sometimes I'd walk out of the house being like, Brian, what the hell are you doing? Like, literally, what are you doing? Um, but for me, it was just a passion. I knew my compass was right. I knew I was doing something right. I was affecting people's lives. People that watched it were like, Brian, this is special. So I just kept going. But on that same note, I don't believe that if you follow your passion, everything will be great. I don't believe right. in that model either. Right. You have to, at some point, take a bird's eye view of what you're doing and say, okay, now we have to make this a business or we have to get down to brass tacks. I don't think you can just do what you love right. and everything's going to work out. In fact, Ty Lopez, who we've been talking about today, actually, I recorded a video with him. Uh, if you're watching this on the James Swanick YouTube channel, go back like to maybe like uh, March 2015 and the headline or the title of the video is Do Not Follow Your Passion, um, which <laughs> yeah. is a kind of cool headline because yeah. yeah. it goes against conventional belief. But um, I used to love Tottenham Hotspur. Well, I love Tottenham Hotspur, the Premier League football team, and I created about five years ago Tottenham Nation blog. And I thought I would love it. This is what I'm going to do. This is going to be amazing. It's going to be so fun. After three months, I'm like, I hate this. I hate writing about my team, and I fell out of love with the business. So right. you do have to be very conscious that just because you have a, a hobby or a passion, it doesn't mean you're going to love doing it as. Uh, as a business, you're lucky because you have, right? Like you love yeah. doing, yeah. but you probably fell out of love with business when from banking when you were doing banking, right? I fell out of love for making money for money's sake. That just doesn't make sense to me, and you see it all the time. Uh, I met a lot of billionaires, and they're some of the grumpiest people you've ever met because they're trying to chase something they'll never get. So, like, I just really think I got to do something that I love every day, something I can be like, I'm satisfied that I'm making a difference. So that has to come first. Then the money would be great. But like I'm not focused on a certain dollar figure or a certain house or a certain car. It's really more about doing something that's amazing, making a great business out of it. Uh, that's where I'm at right now in my life. So, right. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, check out uh, Brian's uh, show, London Real, on YouTube. Subscribe to it. It's a wonderful show with some great content. So go ahead now and leave a comment below this video and uh, tell us what you think. Like, what do you what what do you think is your passion that you want to try? What's one thing that you can do right now to activate that passion and turn it into a business, maybe? Um, Brian, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It was my pleasure. You have a beautiful phone and a great <laughs> interview style. It was great sharing the stage with you at Ty's conference in January. So uh, good seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. This is not a phone. What are you talking about? This is like we've, <laughs> we've got a whole production crew HD right here. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> so from London, England, Hampstead. Heath, subscribe, 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 leave a comment. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.